Welcome back everyone to the Audacious Money Witch channel where we talk about investing and trading stocks, bonds, and crypto assets around the world. As most of you know, I used to own Alibaba stock. I bought it for the reason that it's just too cheap to ignore. Also, I like to buy stocks that people hate. That's where you could get an unpolished jam. In this video, I want to talk about what just happened with Chinese stocks like Alibaba and why I don't regret selling my shares. Then I will talk about the stocks I bought with the profit I took from selling Baba stock, why I think those are better money makers in the long run. At the end, I will talk about the lessons I learned from selling my Baba obviously too early. Thank you for joining me and hit the like button if you've enjoyed today's episode and subscribe for more. Let's get right into it. My last Estee Lauder stock video, it called the bottom on China, if you have the chance to see that. So why is Chinese stock going to the moon all of a sudden? Like always, it has to come back to Chinese government. They are the ones that pull the plug, and now they are the ones that try to control the situation they caused which is why I don't consider my original BABA stock buy as an investment. It's more like a speculative trading on valuation and sentiment. Because first of all, what you own is ADR. It's not the actual pieces of a business. Second, it's not a political system anyone can predict. The power is only in one man's hand. So what exactly happened? Recently, the Chinese government has introduced a significant stimulus package aimed at revitalizing its struggling economy. Key components of this initiative include reserve requirement ratio cut. The People's Bank of China announced a reduction in the RRR for banks by 50 basis points. This move is expected to release approximately 1 trillion yuan into the economy, allowing banks to lend more freely and support economic activity. Interest rate reductions, the PBOC also lowered a critical policy interest rates, bringing it down to 1.5%. Additionally, interest rates on existing mortgages will be reduced by an average of 0 0.5 percentage points, which aims to alleviate financial pressure on households and stimulate consumer spending. Focus on the property sector. In response to challenges in the real estate market, the government is implementing measures to support property developers and encourage home purchases including lowering the minimum down payment for residential properties to 15%. This represents the most substantial stimulus efforts since 2020, reflecting an urgent response to Chinese deflation. The reasons that I am not regretting selling all of my shares is that I made some money. I bought the dip in BABA in the high 60s and lowered my cost basis, so even though I didn't get the recent 25% breakout FOMO gain, I made money and directed the gains to other bean down dog stocks like Roku, Lulu stock. I also bought Google stock at the recent dip, believe it or not. I sold my BABA in May at $88 a share, which gives me a lot of time and liquidity to load up on the dip of Roku in the low 50s. Right now I'm already up 40% on my Roku stock. So why Roku? Roku's streaming platform connects consumers, content publishers, and advertisers. It monetizes paid content by charging fees for transactions processed through Roku Pay. And it monetizes ad-supported content by selling inventory and ad tech software. Roku sources advertising inventory from content publishers on the platform, but it also operates an ad-supported service called the Roku Channel. Roku is the most popular streaming platform in the U.S. as measured by streaming time and the company is well positioned to maintain its leadership. Roku OS is the best selling TV operating system in the U.S., Canada and Mexico which points to brand authority. Mom! This TV sucks! But it's brand new! There is everything! Did you look on the thing, honey? Yes, I looked on the thing! The TV was expensive! Then why does it suck? I don't know! You need to get a Roku streaming stick! It makes your smart TV so much easier to use! Is it expensive? No! I really love coming home! That's better. Less screaming, more streaming. Roku. Indeed, in the second quarter, Roku OS was made more popular than the next two operating systems combined in the terms of TV unit sales. Roku is coming for Meta with launching Ad Manager. 
In order to meet growth marketeers' needs across all direct-to-consumer brands, Roku built a seamless solution to buying CTV video ads for brands of any size. Roku's ad manager is uniquely positioned to offer data optimization and ad formats that no other CTV self-serve solution has, like native shoppable campaigns with Shopify, all while providing a familiar buying experience similar to search and social. Roku also remains very committed to its namesake set-top boxes even as the electronics industry shifts to smart televisions with built-in streaming technology. Roku unveiled a faster version of its $99 Roku Ultra Box with an upgraded remote control. I think there are a ton of opportunities for this technology. This is my long-term play. Roku built its brand around set-top boxes, devices that plug into existing TVs and add this company's interface and apps, but the industry has shifted to TVs that run the software directly. Where's the remote? I don't know where the remote is. Are you guys looking for the remote? Yeah! yeah. Jenny! Mom and Dad are looking for the remote! I'm only five! I'm not even allowed to watch TV! Have you guys thought about getting a Roku? It has a lost remote finder! That would make our lives a lot less frustrating! Thanks for bringing that to our attention, son! You're welcome, Jen! I love you! I love you! Less screaming, more streaming. Roku. Roku itself has been part of this transition. The company sells its own TVs and its technology is integrated into other models. TVs are now slightly higher unit sellers than the external devices known as players. But the box category is still a strong seller in the U.S. Roku generated $491 million last year from devices, including TVs and players. The company's biggest revenue driver is its platform and programming content, which generated almost $3 billion in 2023. Roku players are still important for people with older TVs who want to add a newer experience, and they outsell competitors' devices. Why is this so hard? I just want a new TV! We're still doing that? It's so confusing! Let me try! Great! Do we want QLED or OLED or 4K or Hertz or HDMI or HDMI 10 or HDMI? Don't give up! Ah! What if we got a Roku TV? It's great for streaming and it updates itself so it keeps getting better! Just like our marriage! Every day with you is a gift! That's better. Less screaming, more streaming. Roku. Roku's content business, which includes revenue sharing from streaming services and advertising sales, is its real moneymaker. The new Roku Ultra players added the Wi-Fi 6 standard for better connectivity and upgrade over Wi-Fi 5, although a support for 8K resolution is still several years away, given the limited amount of programming available. And while some folks have begun watching TV and virtual reality, Roku has no current plans to get into the metaverse. In August, Google introduced a new TV streamer, a revamped set-top box built around AI, which is why I bought the recent dip at Google at $148 a share. Why do I believe Roku has way more upside than Alibaba? 700% implied upside to be exact. Just as the crash from 2021, it started with the Chinese stock, then the Kathy Wood stocks, then the big tech stocks. Now that big tech has run out of fuel, Wall Street is heading to China. Soon they are going to be back for Kathy Wood stocks, especially after the Fed rate cuts with stimulation. Roku reported encouraging results in Q2. Active accounts increased 14% and streaming hours jumped 20%, which means the average account engaged with the platform more frequently. What Roku reports quarterly doesn't matter in the long run, so long as it has the highest market shares. In addition to Roku being the most popular streaming platform in North America, Roku is well positioned to benefit as streaming accounts for more of TV viewing time and advertisers spend more on connected TV. Wall Street expects Roku's revenue to compound at 13% annually through 2025, but that estimate leaves room for upside. CTV ad spending is projected to grow at 12% annually during the same period and Roku's leadership in North America, coupled with its expanding presence in international markets, could lead to faster than expected growth.
Having said that, the current valuation of 2.8 times sales is reasonable even if the Wall Street consensus is accurate. Personally, I think ARK's price target of $605 per share is achievable. Due to the reason that once Roku becomes profitable, Wall Street will pour money into this baby like we have never seen before. And we are all going to party in the Roku City. Woohoo! Patient investors will win in the end. This is the most important lesson I took away from my experience with Babastock.